So we know we have these four big classes of materials we have to ingest. How does your body then digest them? How does it break them down into usable components that you can use to keep your body functioning and to get energy? It all starts with the mouth. Your body is a series of tubes. We just talked about that. There's that one tube, as we looked at it in the pig, that goes all the way from the mouth to the anus. That's what we're going to be following today. It starts in the mouth. This is a specially adapted entrance that leads to your endoderm. You all have one. They're pretty cool. In your mouth, you have teeth. Because you're a mammal, it means you have specialized teeth. You have some teeth that are going to be used for slicing, your incisors, some that are going to be used for ripping, your canines, some that are going to be used for grinding, your molars. You have muscles in your jaw that are going to be used for breaking these materials down, grinding them up. You chew. Humans chew things. Some animals don't. Uh, butterflies, for instance, will only drink. Um, flies will vomit a, uh, an enzyme onto their food that liquefies the food and allows them to digest it by slurping it up. I'll be dead honest, if I could, I would live by smoothie alone. I hate chewing because it's just a waste of my time. Um, I, just, uh, I don't like chewing. Um, I don't mind the sound of chewing. My wife hates when I chew things. Um, there's some people that have a really big, how many of you guys have issues with listening, hearing other people chew? Yeah, a few people are just like, it is the worst. You can hear, right, you can hear it, like, if they're in two rooms over, you're like, no, stop. No chewing. Smoothies would work for them. In your mouth, you're going to produce a lot of saliva. That's that liquid substance in there. And saliva is not just water. It's filled with an enzyme called amylase. Um, amylase breaks down carbohydrates into simple sugar. So digestion, the chemical breakdown of food, begins in your mouth. The longer you chew on a carbohydrate, the more it gets broken down. So think if you're eating a pasta, starch. You chew on it, the amylase breaks that starch down into an easily digestible sugar. Now you produce a lot of saliva a day. You produce 1.5 liters of saliva a day. That's roughly an entire wine bottle of your own spit. Um, so that's fun to think about. Also in your mouth is a tongue. This is a very strong, or, uh, uh, yeah, a very strong muscle. Uh, and its job is to move food around your mouth and turn it into what's called a bolus. When you're eating, and I, I strongly encourage you to think about, you know, really deliberately think about how you eat next time you eat something, hopefully shortly. You put it in your mouth, you chew it, and you're going to find that your tongue moves it all over the place. It's going to turn it into a ball. And that ball will be coated in saliva. So you've got a bolus coated in saliva in your mouth, churned up by your tongue. Your tongue um, also, I don't know if you've ever taken a really big bite, you start to, you'll find that you partition the food into different parts of your mouth. Some goes into your cheeks, and then you work with like a small bit of it in your, uh, on, in your mouth itself with your tongue. That gets swallowed, and then you shift some of the material from your cheek onto your tongue, and you do it again. Think about it next time you eat something. Just feel the way the food is moving in your mouth. It's actually super interesting what we do automatically, or at least most of us do automatically. So the bolus will then move down the esophagus propelled by muscle contractions. It's almost like if you were to take a, um, a golf ball and squeeze it through a hose. The muscles will open up, allowing the bolus in, and then squeeze behind it, pushing it down. Gravity's not really involved in this. It's muscle contractions from your throat all the way to your stomach. If you were to be upside down, you um, could uh, take like swallow water because it goes through a muscle contraction pushing a, uh, the water down in front of it. So, you're pushing things against gravity, moving them from your uh, mouth to your stomach. As you're swallowing, you've got a, uh, a flap of, of um, muscle in the back called a uvula. 
This is going to fold upward as you swallow to prevent material from going back up your nose. Because <coughs> remember, you've got that sinus right in the back of your throat. You want to make sure that food and water don't go up into your sinuses as you're, um, as you're eating. So then, have their uvula removed? Do they? Does, well, she have, well, she might have an issue with if she was to swallow and then laugh, uh, the material going back up her nose. And that actually happens to some people. Um, if you ever have seen somebody like spray milk out of their nose, what ends up happening is you've swallowed a drink, it's gone down past your uvula, but then you explosively laugh and it pushes the, the material back up through your um, sinuses. Doritos hurt. I've had somebody laugh so hard they shot carrots out their nose. And that was a real win for me. <clears throat> so now we get down to the stomach. And the stomach is basically a muscle-bound sack of acid that mixes up the food. Acids have a very low pH, right? Food enters into the stomach where it's mixed with acid. The amylase denatures here. So you, are stop, you stop all of that digestion of carbohydrates in the stomach. But also in the stomach, you have another enzyme called pepsin. Pepsin is a low pH enzyme. It breaks down proteins. So you've got this food to your stomach. The, um, uh, the amylase breaks down, so you're no longer digesting carbohydrates. The pepsin starts to break down proteins into individual peptides, and you create a mixture of food and enzymes that's called chyme. You have likely seen chyme if you've ever thrown up. If you've thrown up, that material coming out of your stomach is chyme. Well, that's not stomach bile. Bile happens in your, uh, beyond the stomach. So yeah, it's, but it's basically a bunch of acid enzymes, and pre-digested food. The stomach acts as a storage tank, a slow release. You may eat, say, three large meals a day, but your stomach is constantly releasing food uh, at a very slow rate into your small intestine. <clears throat> Basically, this is to prevent backups. So uh, you don't have any open space, well, with any luck, you don't have big open spaces in your small intestine where there's no food being digested at any given point. You're constantly pushing that chyme from your stomach into your small intestines through what's called the pyloric sphincter, but we'll get into that in a second. Stomach acid's job, part of it, is to kill bacteria. And we talked about if bacteria have a big, thick cell wall, they can be protected against that. But the stomach acid does serve as a defense against bacteria and fungus uh, and viruses. Stomach lining wears down very, very quickly. As you can imagine, an acidic environment is not conducive to um, tissue survival. So the mucus that uh, creates that lining is going to be secreted by cells underneath them, and you get a new uh, stomach lining every week. There are some things that can cause this to uh, not work as well. Uh, for instance, a fungal infection, a bacterial infection, or just stress um, may lead to your stomach lining not forming properly and leading to um, ulcers. After food enters into your stomach, the uh, muscles begin to contract and release, which causes that chyme to get mixed up. So you've got all these boluses that are getting all mixed up. And think of it like an agitation cycle on a washing machine. So if you put f um, clothes in your washing machine, they start to shake and get all of the um, soap mixed up with them, that's what's happening in your stomach. Sometimes, let's see if, yeah, when you, your stomach is empty but you're thinking about food, which some of you may be now, you'll start to hear it rumble. And grumble, you know, it's sort of a grumbling sound. That's because thinking about food triggers um, your body to release hormones and enzymes that say, okay, start digestion. So your stomach starts to do the agitation cycle, but there's nothing in it. So it's empty, so you get that sort of uh, like a hollow sound. From the stomach, um, the chime passes through what's called the pyloric sphincter. A sphincter is a type of muscle that basically, it's a, think of it as a tube <coughs> that will squeeze shut. 
So it's going to go from the stomach into the small intestine through the pyloric sphincter, which is right here. It's going to enter into the duodenum, then the jejunum, then the ileum, which are awesome names, but they make up the small intestine. The role of the small intestine, big picture role, is to take nutrients out of the food, out of the chyme, and put it into the bloodstream. There's lots and lots and lots of twists and turns in the small intestine. Why? More surface area. The surf more surface area you have, the more nutrients you can absorb. It may be really thin, and it's thin to increase surface area, but it could be up to 20 feet long. So your small intestine is maybe four times larger than you are. Longer, anyway. The first part's called the duodenum. Um, it's where bile from the liver and the gallbladder get put into the acid. Its role is to act as, uh, it, it creates buffers. So these biles are buffers. And what's the role of a buffer? Do you guys remember from 101? Not necessarily lower as much as to bring it to, a, to one condition. In this case, you're going to increase the uh, pH level from being very acidic to being much more basic. Otherwise, it'd be like, I don't know, a scene from Alien where the acid would eat right through you. As you move beyond the duodenum, um, you're going to start encountering villi. Villi means fingers. Villi? No. Villi means hairs, not fingers. Yeah, villi means hair. Um, the walls of the small intestine are filled with villi, that in turn have microvilli on them. So think about fingers with little fingers sticking off of them. It's kind of creepy when you think about it. Um, they're going to absorb simple carbohydrates and peptides from the chyme through diffusion. Fats will also be absorbed through ducts found in the villi, and they get turned into fatty acids and glycerol. But the big thing is those villi, do I have a, a image of, yeah, here we go. Those villi are going to um, have blood cap uh, capillaries going up through them. So you've got the capillary going up. As the chyme passes, it's going to diffuse nutrients into that blood, which will then leave, go throughout the rest of the body, carrying the nutrients with it. So you have villi with teeny tiny microvilli on top to increase the um, surface area even more. And they're going to pass nutrients back and forth through the blood. From the small intestine, we go into the large intestine. And the large intestine does not play any digestive role. You're not absorbing any more nutri nutrients at this point. You got all the nutrients you could from your super long small intestine. Now what you're going to do in the large intestine is you've got this um, nutrient less. That is, it doesn't have any nutrients. This waste from the small intestine getting pumped into it. It's a whole bunch of undigestible food and dead cells. <clears throat> there is, it's about five feet long. It goes, uh, sort of goes uh, down, up, over, back down. Um, it has, it uh, has no digestive role. Its whole role is to recover water. Because remember, water is super important. Without water, we die. You don't want to have all of this waste filled with water constantly being excreted. You want to recover as much water as possible. So you squeeze the water out in your, small, in your large intestine, get it back into your body, and then that concentrates the waste very, very highly. In your large intestine, you also have a lot of bacteria at work. These bacteria live in a mutualistic relationship with you. Their job is to break down the food you couldn't break down and give you a little bit of nutrients back. They're going to pass the nutrients through, back to you through diffusion. When they're breaking down that undigestible food, though, they're also producing a lot of waste products. <coughs> the smell that you get from feces is often these dead bacteria or their byproducts. Not necessarily what's in your body so much as the bacteria that are in there. Um, it's the gases produced by these bacteria that actually probably cause you to bloat and get a lot of um, gas. I don't know if you've noticed, there, there might be some foods that you eat that you, you're going to end up expelling a lot more odors than other foods. 
And that's because some foods you can digest really well and other foods you rely on bacteria to digest who in turn produce a whole bunch of um, byproducts, uh, odorous byproducts. When you do end up excreting or, or mammals end up excreting, uh, the color of the feces is typically brownish or greenish. Uh, and that's caused by the bile that's broken down from the trip through the small intestine. So for every pound of watery waste that enters the large intestine, you get about a quarter pound of feces produced because you've taken out a whole bunch of uh, water. About half the weight of the, back of the feces is dead bacterial cells. So that's what you do. Now you know all about how you poop. Probably more than you wanted to know, but there you go. The large intestine um, and small intestine as well, both have peristalsis. That's what moves these um, balls of chyme, this, this um, watery slurry through there in order to extract um, nutrients. And in the large intestine, you also use it to uh, push out a bowel movement. Uh, obviously, you can control it um, through, through neural connections but it's also an auto automatic. Sometimes you can't stop yourself. So typically, this results in three to four bowel movements a day, uh, depending on your um, diet. I will tell you, and this might scare you, it's healthy bowel movements would be three a day. Most people do about two a day in America. The more you know. It takes about 12 to 36 hours for food to make its way all the way through the large intestine. Um, so there you go. What you're looking at that comes out in your toilet is not what you ate for breakfast. It's probably what you had yesterday. Liquid waste, as we talked about with the endocrine system, um, is going to be caused by an excess of amino acids. And again, as we discussed, um, the liver is going to be highly involved here. It's going to be, the liver and the kidneys are going to be involved. Um, the liver monitors chemical levels in the blood, so it's going to release and store um, materials as necessary, but it cannot store amino acids. So those amino acids, when they're in, uh, as waste, need to be removed, are going to get shifted over to the kidney, where it's filtered out by that filtration system we talked about, the filtrate and the, uh, the tubes in the kidney. Um, they're going to break down the amino acids, and um, concentrate them into urea. Urea is then going to be, uh, it's very highly acidic, it's going to be shifted to the bladder where it's mixed with water in order to allow it to be excreted. Um, that bladder fills up like a balloon. Usually it's about the size of a golf ball, um, which most people don't realize. It feels so much bigger than that, especially when you've had a lot to drink. But it does expand um, a lot like a balloon. You've got two uterus coming into the bladder. Um, they actually have hinges on them so that as this fills, the hinges will close so there's not backflow back uh, to the kidneys uh, because that would lead to a lot of permanent damage if that happened. Then when your bladder is full, you get, your brain gets a signal. You recognize that you need to pee and you can. It's a voluntary control. So there we go. The digestive system. We have covered a lot today, guys. Uh, we covered the endocrine system. We covered the digestive system. We covered the circulatory system. We talked a bit about the excretory system. We knocked out a whole bunch. Um, do you guys have questions or concerns? <laughs>